really one of the things we're trying to do with the Marie Curie program is to bring, well, three things, really. It's a sense of history of what we do, the integrity, and I use the word advisedly um, because it's what, you know, we would say these things, not being pious. I think everybody involved in it would, would think of it, who'd been involved in it from the beginning, would think of it this way. We do have committed, I think there were the aims and objectives. We've committed agenda all the way through, and we thought, and I'll, I'll say something about the history to this, but we thought <coughs> quite recently, actually, um, that we should try and get more substantial support for the activities that we do. And who are we? What is the background to this? Well, you'll be, hopefully, all the Marie Curie fellows here will be ac in the academy for a long time, maybe some working in other contexts, other sectors, and so on. But as researchers, we hope that, that something you learn from, what, from this program is that um, the kind of research you do matters. Sometimes you don't always do it as well as we should. I shouldn't be, sh shouldn't be saying this <laughs> at the start of your training program. But we don't always do it as well as we should. But we always, do, we always have to be clear about our intention, why we're doing it what, it, what it means to us. And if you think that it doesn't matter, after what I've said, you'll find that, that some people do. And other interests are, have to see research in a different way. But they see research as, as, as having an intention. I'm talking about powerful lobbies, and not just the state, um, and not just, you know, not just governments. And we've been clear really from the beginning about the sort of agenda that we have in our, in our work and our activity. And maybe it, I could say something about our prehistory. Well, if you go back to 1995, um, a very interesting little informal network was set up with uh, Jean-Pierre Durand, Barrier Simonson, uh, Steve Jeffries here, and Pierre Damaret. Pierre Damaret will be here from what, Sunday, Monday. And Jean Pierre de Ronc gives his apologies, he can't make it, but he would dearly love to be here. Um, and I got involved in the programme in 1996. And the objective of the, of the programme was really an informal network of um, researchers with students, graduate students, committed to work with. Um, employees, workers, the excluded, people doing research, not just outside the mainstream, but research which wasn't always recognised as being centrally important. <coughs> Moreover, research that wasn't always funded by research councils in, in whatever country. It was very difficult to get research funding for a lot of the research that the sort of students involved in our network um, were doing. And uh, this developed, network developed quite nicely. We would meet annually, very informal. Um, numbers of students varied. Sometimes it was 30, in excess of 30. I think one of the biggest early meetings we had would have been at, at Bristol UWE, University of West of England. So I think we had over 40 people participating. <coughs> at this stage, um, it then became quite difficult to get funding. Um, our research agenda didn't change. Our research was we could, participants could contrive this in different ways, but I interpret it as being this, about the active engagement with labour, labour in a broad sense, both people in employment and people without employment, and when they're in employment, their organisations or trade unions, um, and people outside work. But the, 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 nevertheless, if you like, the leitmotif of our, our, our activity would be we would work with students and try to draw students in who had a commitment to an, in, to an innovative way of doing research, um, and, but whose central uh, philosophy was uh, of the network and subsequently changing employment was really working with people excluded, that our research activity and our research domain would be in, in that area. That is us as researchers, and that's how we interpreted it, I think, as, as, uh, as, as supervisors in the research process. Um, we had inf uh, annual informal meetings of the network, which were which were good. But at the end of the net, at the end of the meetings, international studies and working life, there's always a feeling: who's going to do it next year? Who can afford to do it? <coughs> um, and uh, it was coming very it was coming very expensive. Um, 2004 Bristol, um, over 40 people. Um, 2004 2005. We had a very successful meeting here. Remember, Barry, it was outside. It was a bit warmer than this, but a very nice idea. And actually, that's when we realized that it was possible to think about getting 
graduate students together to develop networks on their own. And people had a little, um, I think with Dora and one of your former colleagues was, was involved in putting together the, the agenda and they had to pick it up and run with it at a day's notice. Okay, you've only had three months, <laughs> but they had a day's notice and they had to come up with topics and the agenda. It, it worked very well and we thought, how can we develop this? And two things happened. One was, as you know, I'm aware that sometimes universities are put under pressure by us to come up with funding and there, is, there isn't any, you know, there isn't funding there. And we were encouraged to think much more widely about how we would get resources and, and Berrier and I. And uh, I think it might have been Frederick Mispelblom talked about getting European funding, but it was very, we didn't have a sense of what that might be. Uh, and, uh, but we, we did think that it would involve, you know, money which would support an annual colloquium, It'd be a network for student activities and also would involve publications because that's really what we're expected to do. That's what you're expected to do in your career as part of your activity and part of what we have to do. Um, the problem arose that there was some mobility. So it was very hard to sustain the network. The Inter-Ross Studies work now very difficult to sustain because people were moving um, or people uh, not didn't lose interest but different places in their career. Um, but we decided in 2007 to go for, to actually be, in a sense, I use the word again, advisory professional, but it involved actually having an infrastructure. We needed to think about an infrastructure that would provide a, a stream of funding for the activities that we wanted to do. Um, and by the way, that what became well, what's commonly called the seniors here, the supervisors, some of them were working together anyway. Steve was doing a lot of work in FRA. I'm working with, with Berrier, and I was working at FRA sometimes with, with Jean-Pierre Durand and then, and, and then with Stefan Bocard. And then with, with uh, uh, Holm in Oviedo. And, uh, and I've been working for some time with, with Valeri Polignano as well from Levin. But <coughs> what really made the difference, I think, was in 2008, meeting in London Met um, and sitting down and thinking, how, you know, what can we, how can we get this network set up on a, on a sound on a substantial footing, what, how do we get the funding? And really, when uh, you know, without trying to embarrass you, but I think when Doris Galarius got involved, I think that really was the. This is how the money works. This is how you have to do it. This is what we, these are the. These are. This is how we pursue the agenda. And I think a number of things coming together. I think then. Um, uh, so we just, sorry, we decided to have a meeting in in January in Paris, two thousand and nine. And that was, and was great. Then uh, Oviedo came on board. Sorry. Yeah, we got CEU. So um, Viola from, from Hungary came along and that then began to broaden out, really opened up the, the network beyond the small international and working life cohort because we had to think then about the kind of agenda we wanted, whether it was just um, based on the original participants and what, you know, and there's a rationale for that which doesn't sell, you know, to anybody outside that original little network in terms of why you're involved, why I'm involved. So I had to think more strategically about the, the, where we wanted the network to be based, the complexity of the work that we wanted to do, necessitated looking at, the, I mean, it's called changing employment. There have been variants of that, changing labour markets in Europe and so on, but Europe can't only be you know, can't only be Britain, Britain, France, and, and, and Sweden. <laughs> so, you know, we thought about, you know, we thought about that very carefully. When um, Holm came on board from Oviedo, that was very important. And then, um, of course, Adam from Brasilov. Adam, um, story of commitment, I won't embarrass you here, actually came to one of the early international studies in working life because people drawn into the idea of what we were trying to do had to see this activity in, 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 in practice in real time. And I'll show you a little video that Dora and some colleagues made it at uh, Strathclyde about one of the activities. And he came, I didn't realize he slept in the park for three days in Glasgow to, to, to do them. <laughs> and, and that kind of, yeah. And you know, I, but actually, you know, you paid yourself to come along. I didn't realize, I thought you actually worked as a postdoc in, in Levun at the time, but you actually paid for yourself to go to the ISWL meeting. That was important. So, you know, the network became bigger God, if anybody ever calls me a Dirk Hymen, then um, I deserve it. But the whole really was worth more than some of its part in this case because it expands the size of the network 
became quite significantly different. You know, it wasn't just that there were more members in different countries, but more members in different countries. And the fact we wanted to look at employment change transformed the characteristics of the network quite substantially. <coughs> um, uh, so we had then, we sat down, and it was a very complicated process. And there's another bit of history which I'm writing, just putting together really some of the documents on this. Um, we, we did think about putting some, we could put some of the early uh, drafts that we made, certainly for the January meeting 2009 on our website to show you how, you know, how, the, how, the, progr how the program evolved. But when, when I look back at the 2009 draft we did for Paris, um, at, uh, and it didn't really evolve terribly much as an agenda, um, when we came to, to make a submission in December 2009, it, it's extraordinary we did as well as we did actually in the submission. We were quite un unaware of, of just the technical uh, difficulties that, that, that were a, a attached to making this kind of bid. Um, I would say that actually what you're doing now, what the um, early stage researchers, Marie Curie Fellows and Postdoc, um, Seda and then other people are doing, actually isn't really a lot different from what we originally wrote about in 2009. The ideas that we had, you know, the kind of broad areas around migration, employment change, quality of working life, call what you will. These three broad areas, we took some time to think about how we could divide these up. What would be the three areas that we thought, there could have been other areas that we looked at as social scientists, but these were the three themes that, that uh, began to emerge over a period of about a year. And we submitted this, Dora and I was, I think you were in the plane in America when you saw this stuff to me, and I was uh, meeting with Gareth Mackle, colleague from Karja Cho in, in Cork, but I escaped to, I wasn't staying with him and I was escaped the hotel. Um, you wouldn't have known about it this time, but we were putting together the early bid. Um, and we were surprised how well we did. You had to get 70% to be considered fundable. And we got 70%. Um, uh, what did we get there? I think, can't remember exactly the number. I couldn't find the, the search of value. Whenever you make the bid, you get a response from what's called the European Commission's Research Evaluation Agency, and they, they give a little table. Um, and we haven't put it in public domain because I'm not sure it is available to the public, but it broke down all the categories, the different points we got for each of the criteria, you know, and we got, we got over 70%, but we didn't get the money, and we we're very disappointed because it really was difficult. And, and, and uh, But because we did reasonably well and got over the 70% threshold, we thought, well, let's try again. So we tried again 2000, um, for the 2011 bid ag again. It was good, better, but still no thanks. Improvement, but we didn't get the money. And at this time, we had a meeting. It might have been an ISWL meeting. Um, and no, we, uh, it, it was an informal network again of people. We, they came to Strathclyde, very cold November. Then we thought, OK, we'll make, let's go for final bid. Um, and. Uh, you know, I think that that really was quite substantial. Changes were made which were substantially diff made, it, made, tec made it technically much more believable. We didn't realize that it's not enough to say you want to do research on change employment in Europe and look at us, we, we've all done it, we're really good. Some of the things we had to do were actually quite banal because we had to say, if somebody's going to do it, they have to go here for six months and this is what they will study. And uh, the detail of that was, was, uh, was very, 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 very time consuming, very complex. But what I think transformed it, I'm going to embarrass another colleague here again, Adam, was for quite fortuitously, and you know, you find in the course of your academic career, research career, serendipity is very important. Just by chance, Adam was, we were able to get Adam over for, you were working, we were working for six weeks, uh, was it six weeks? Uh, uh, six, seven weeks, something like that at Strathclyde. So Dora and I locked him in a room and said, <laughs> do, the, do the deliverables, um, the training package. But it invo so it, it's, there's a lot of planning, a lot of serendipity as well, and actually just a lot, lot of hard work. You know. um, and then, uh, you know, so the outcome was that we got 94.2%, <coughs> which, you know, out of those 1,200 bids last January 2012, and around 120, I think it's 121 actually, successful applications, fewer than 10% of those bids go to social scientists. I think it's about 8% of social scientists. I don't know about your own, about other countries, but in, in Britain, I think there's only four social science 
awards in, in the area. So we're very pleased with that. Um, and this is really the, I mean, these are the, the full partners, uh, you know, with ETUI, uh, Gothenburg, Strathclyde, and so on down here, Consulting Europa. And uh, the associate partners are very important as well. So what we've, we've tried to do is to provide an agenda for that <coughs> really continues our original intention, um, which is, you know, active engagement with labor, progressive research agenda, and, f and you can't, you, you know, you can't uh, mediate somebody else's ex experience, you can interpret it, you know, as a social scientist. We can't substitute for it, <coughs> we wouldn't pretend to do that, and it may not really matter after four years, but we think that, you know, b between us, as, I suppose what you call the seniors have, I was trying to think about this, um, it, you know, I think probably there's, you know, there's several hundred years experience that we have of of putting together networks and usually you've got to be in the academy you know 10 15 years before you make links with other people and in other institutions sometimes longer sometimes it doesn't go anywhere but what we're trying to do for you one of the things we're trying to do in terms of your, your career development uh, and not unless you know, not being rhetorical here your career development is to give you an idea of what those things can mean what they can lead to of course like all these things it depends what you want to make of it but for us the idea is that you can develop these networks that you have in a different way, you know, with other, uh, with other uh, uh, networks that you have. Um, but that, um, you know, it's providing that space and opportunity for you to do radical critical work, which is supported by the European Commission, which is very unusual. Uh, and that's, that's really, that's very, that's very important. That's very important uh, source of, 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 of research activity. Okay.